Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy, and in this video, I'm gonna help you get over a common frustration of quilting with curved rulers. I can still think back to the very first time I tried quilting with a curved ruler on my long arm. Let me just assure you that it did not look good at all. Turns out it might be just a little trickier than I thought. Now, over the years, I finally mastered quilting with curved rulers through a little trial and error, mostly error. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quilt with curved rulers on a long arm and give you some tips to make it easier. Now, if you don't have a long arm, you should still keep watching because I'm gonna show you how to quilt serpentine lines in two inch borders with Squiggy, and I'll show you how to use Squiggy to quilt wavy lines. It's gonna be awesome, so let's get to quilting. To help us learn how to quilt along curved rulers, I'm gonna use Squiggy. Positioning the ruler, what I'm gonna do is use my hands to hold it in place, and I'm gonna use a firm grip, but I'm not gonna push down or strain my hands a lot. I'm just gonna make sure that it's in place. Now, when you're quilting a curve, the thing that makes it tricky is that your point of contact on the foot is gonna be different. So, for instance, let's say I'm going along this curve. Right here, my point of contact is at the bottom of my foot. But as I begin to work my way around that curve, now it's changed. Now I'm contacting on the right side. And then as I go around the top, it's gonna to be touching, again, the bottom side. As I come around to the side, it's gonna go on the left. Now what's gonna happen is as I'm moving around, I wanna be sure that I'm kinda of pulling the machine into the ruler. And what that's gonna do is make sure that I make it around this curve. If I don't, what happens is I'll start quilting and it will kinda of go off into space like this. And if you do that, believe me, you're completely normal. I'm gonna take my time and work my way around this curve. Now what some people will do is we think we have to do this whole curve in one movement, and that's not the case. Take your time, reposition your hands, do whatever you need to do to quilt that curve. Now, I actually designed Squiggy to quilt serpentine lines. So if you can imagine, even though it looks like a weird shaped ruler, what I'm using is actually half of the ruler to quilt a serpentine line. I can actually quilt from the left to the right or to the right to the left, and that's gonna make it nice and versatile. And over here, I went ahead and made some borders to practice quilting it in. Okay, so I have my two inch border, and what I'm gonna do is use the inside of my ruler to quilt that serpentine line. Now most long arms have about a quarter of an inch between the needle and the foot. So what I'm gonna do is position the ruler like so. And these needle stops are gonna help make sure that my ruler is straight to my seam. Then what I'm gonna do is quilt along this side of the ruler right here. And as soon as I touch that seam, I'm gonna stop even if it's not perfectly in the center. So once I'm here, I'm gonna move my ruler over just a bit. I'm gonna travel down along that seam about a quarter or a half of an inch, depending on how much spacing I want in between my lines. Travel down here, and then I'm going to reposition my ruler. Again, I'm gonna use my needle stops to line that with the seam. I'm gonna hold it in place, and right here, if I need to stop, I'm gonna stop, reposition my hands, reposition the ruler if necessary, and then continue until I touch the seam. That's the trick, as soon as I touch the seam, I wanna stop, and then I'm gonna come back down, down a little bit, realigning, and going back up. And if here, I've come just a little bit away, I'm not quite there, so I kind of bring it right into that seam, reposition, and come right back up. The outside of Squiggy can be used to quilt those serpentine lines in three inch borders. And here you can see I've already have that quilted out. Position the ruler is gonna be very similar, except I'm gonna run along the outside of the ruler and not the inside. I'm still gonna use my needle stops to help me gauge where I'm at and still make sure that reference line is running somewhat straight with the seam. Once I'm ready to quilt, I'm gonna use my hand to hold it in place. And I'm gonna to remember to keep the point of contact to the ruler, even if that means it changes on the particular side of the foot. So holding it in place, quilting along until I hit that seam. You can see there I have my first serpentine line. Now I'm gonna travel down along that seam, depending on how much spacing I want, and then reposition my ruler again, using my needle stop and my reference lines to help keep it even going up until I hit the seam, and then I have my second line there. Now you notice I'm turning the ruler around and using it almost like a straight edge. You don't have to do that. I could just freehand down that side, 
but that's going to help me make sure that it's nice and in the seam. And let's do one more. Again, I'm using the reference points on my ruler to help make sure that this ruler is straight to the seam and then quilting along the outside to that line. And there you can see I have my first few serpentine lines. Now let's pretend you're actually quilting a row of sashings. I could go ahead and quilt down this whole row or I can alternate into each sashing as I go. On this one, I've quilted along this length, but what I can do is coming to the next one, I can rotate my ruler and quilt my serpentine line in the opposite direction until I hit the seam. And so there, I went one direction up here, and if I wanted to, I can go ahead alternating directions and go to the other side. Let's go ahead and work our way back. Travel down, repositioning my ruler. Again, I'm looking at that needle stop to help keep it on that line. This reference line right here is also helping me make sure I'm gonna end up in the right spot. And going up, all I have to do is turn my ruler around, reposition. We'll go back up to the next side. And see there, I'm starting to fill in those borders with those serpentine lines. Now I'm gonna keep repeating that until I fill in this area. And I'm just loving how easy it is to go from one direction to the other to quickly quilt those areas. Now, let me show you how you can use squiggy to quilt long wavy lines on your whole quilt. So when I'm ready to quilt a wave, what I'm gonna do is position my ruler and go all along the outer edge. Now these needle stops are gonna help me reposition the ruler to make it continuous without marking. I'm gonna quilt along here, all the while remembering that I need to pull the machine into that ruler. If I need to stop and reposition my hands, I can. We don't have to do this in one movement. I can take my time, but I'm gonna quilt along until I get to that needle stop right there. And you can see I have my first kind of curve. After I'm done quilting that, I'm gonna take the ruler, just reposition it over here, and I'm gonna repeat going around it again. Here, I've quilted a couple more beforehand, so you can see this line is continuing on. Now that I finished a wave, what I could do is I could travel down and echo that shape if I want two waves that are echoing, or I could actually flip this ruler around so I get more of a elongated kind of curvy look and that's really kind of fun. It's a little trickier though when you're quilting this way because now all of a sudden my hand is gonna be in the way of the ruler. So what I'm gonna do is quilt part of it and then reposition my hands and quilt the rest. Stop, and I could either hold it from back here or come to the side just a little bit, which I'm gonna do, and continue along that ruler. And here you can see I'm starting to get that pointy, ovally kind of shape. Let's do it again. The ruler's gonna go upside down, needle stop to needle stop. Working my way around the ruler. If I need to stop and reposition, that's where this grip comes in handy. It's gonna keep the ruler in place. And there you can see I have my second one. And there I have my three lines. What I'm gonna actually do is quilt the inside of my curve this time. So when I line it up and quilt along, it's gonna fill in this space with a differently shaped curve. And now I'm gonna pretty much do the same on the other two. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And there I'm getting those really fun overall shape. And can you imagine how cool it's gonna look when I come and do the next row? Amazing. 
The most important thing to think about when using curved rulers is that I'm gonna take my time going around that curve. I'm gonna make sure that I'm pulling that machine into the different sides of the curve and remembering that if I need to stop and reposition my hands so that I can, it's more important to take it slow than to go fast and not have good control of your ruler. So what do you think? Hopefully when you try quilting with curved rulers on your long arm or your sewing machine, hopefully it'll be easier than you think. But if you have any questions about it, please let me know. Leave them in the comments below. I get on there and try to answer them as much as I can. Plus, if you wanna find any of the products that I've used in this video, you can just check out the description box below. Well, thanks so much for joining me for another video. Happy quilting and I'll see you soon.